Hello everyone, welcome back to World of Tanks with Professor R. Today we're looking at a subscriber replay. This is J.R. Dehart, 2007. It is E75, Tier 9 German Heavy Tank. In this battle, they do lose. But J.R. here shows the strengths of the E75. What it really can do in a play in the hands of somebody that knows how to use it. So he's going down here. Normally, what heavy tanks do. He's not going to have a lot of support. It looks like he will, but there's only going to be two tanks on this corner, fending off a whole horde of people. But that's no problem for the E75. He's taking the charge as he sh as he should. He is the tier nine heavy tank, and most people in the battle are in tier eight tanks. There's not that many tier nines in this battle, anyways. There's a group of IS threes coming around this corner here. But not for long. And there's a VK4502A that's sitting in the back. And there, E75 goes. Bounce, bounce, bounce. If you know how to angle this tank, this easily get steel walls all day long. And sometimes it's really interesting to see the potential damage that your armor absorbed throughout the battle. There's some glitch here where you can shoot through the side of this hill it looks like. But he misses anyways. He does get penetrated there. But he does do 516 damage in return, leaving the IS-3 almost dead. I think it was worth it. E-75 is made to absorb the damage. And he's doing just that, saving his little tier 8 pal. IS-3, trying to side scrape. Not the best idea. Side scraping works in the German tanks. Side scraping doesn't work in the Russians. The Russian IS line that is. Because of that piked armor, pike nose armor in the front, you're just making your whole armor flat. Missed a shot at the VK down there. E75 doesn't follow the typical German rules of really good accuracy it is a big heavy tank it's not the most accurate thing in the world trying to say it's great to these highest threes already bounced a shot and you can see he carries two repair kits and a fire extinguisher very very good this shot, not a very good shot. He did as it expose the front of his tank too much there, but oh well. But down to what he's carrying again. Two repair kits. A large one and a small one. Why? We see when an E75 as you saw earlier, loses it loses its engine or at least damages the engine it's pretty much useless you can barely move it's so big and heavy and you may need to repair your ammo rack sometime the reload is already bad on this thing T-34's got the idea make them come to us unfortunately they do come after him and now he's dead. 
So it's just JR here, E75. And there's another guy that's getting surrounded over there. There he goes. So now he's all alone against at least three or four tanks. We still have a chance to win this. It's just gonna be tough, but. Now he's down to 377 hit points. This ISV doesn't know what he's doing. You don't face hug it. E75. You bounce all the time. E75 is big enough. He can shoot you on that hatch on the top of your turret. You're dead. Now he's going to have some problems. 377 hit points. Going against three tanks. One of them is a tank destroyer. Yeah, odds aren't in his favor, really. Tank Star bounces. Finish him off. Only 13 damage. Kind of a waste of his shell there, but no one else is going to kill him. There's a KB4. KB4 misses. Backs off right before. You can't see right now, but there we go. VK is coming up around him. Left on 22 hit points. Almost set on fire. Luckily, that KB4 only damages his gun. VK bounces off the side of him. That gives him enough time to finish him off. Oh, I think this is the main. Nope. KB4 bounces. Now this is the moment where it's great to be an E75 driver. You're really protected. You can bounce ridiculous shots. But he misses that one. And here comes a KV4. He's trying to wiggle so the KV4 doesn't have a good shot. Apparently it works because he bounced. Finish him off. 99 damage. Now it's only him and the artillery left. Against artillery, IS-6, T-34, and a boar sig. And like with every battle, if you don't know where they're at, start capping. He says he's lucky, but... I don't know if he's really he, a few of those shots. Yes, he was lucky, but sometimes with a little bit of training, you can go a long way. Unfortunately, he repairs that, spends 20,000 credits, but he's not going to do any more damage in this battle. They're capping. They're coming to get him. Which is unfortunate waste. But oh well. He's just too slow. T34 is loading gold. Why would you load gold? But as you can see, he's a tomato. You don't need to load gold. You have enough penetration anyways, you just need to know where to shoot. Oh, Borsig. Too late. He's gone. Those sneaky little Borsigs. Well, that's pretty much it. Enemy team wins. Already doesn't get killed because he's hiding. Let's go see the results of that. Despite the loss, he didn't make off too bad throughout this battle. Damage wise, he did the most 2,271. 5 kills, 598 experience on a loss. It's crazy. Enemy team, you can see that Boar Sig was a really big part of their win. A detailed report 15 shots fired.
only nine of those penetrated. So, just looking at that, you can tell that's gonna be a costly repair bill. Like I said, damage 2271. Hits received 17. Nine of those did not penetrate, which means almost 4,000 damage was blocked by armor. That's enough damage to kill the E75 two times over. He destroyed five enemy vehicles and damaged five enemy vehicles. 201 spawning damage. He only made 22,000 credits, which on a loss is not bad. But Repairville, 17,000 credits. Resupply ammo, 16,000 credits. And resupply consumables, 23,000 credits. He ended up losing quite a bit, 34,515 credits on that battle. That's insane. But, he did get 598 experience. It doesn't show it here, but he did get a courageous resistance experience boost, which is why it's that high. So when you're driving an E75, make sure how to use your armor. Thanks for watching. Share this with your friends, it'll help me out. And make sure to subscribe for more. We'll see you guys later.